All right, it is six o'clock. I will call the 10th regular common council meeting to order. Will the uh, clerk please state the quote of the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The secret of success is to do the common things uncommonly well. All right, will the clerk also call the roll? Alderperson Bourne? Here. Alderperson Svoglio? Present. Alderperson Decker? Here. Alderperson Mitchell? Here. Alderperson Ackley? Here. Alderperson Feldy? Alderperson Felicki Paneski? Here. Alderperson Salazar? Here. Alderperson Perella? Excused. Alderperson Laster? Here. There are nine present. All right, for those in attendance, would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, is there a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting? Alderperson Feldy? Thank you, Mayor. I approve, I move to approve the minutes. Second. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. The minutes are approved. All right, public forum. City Clerk, is there anyone for a public forum? There's one this evening, Dulcie Johnson. All right, Dulcie, you wanna come up right here? Hi, Dulcie, can you state your name and address for us? Dulcie Johnson, 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. Thank you, you'll have five minutes. It's time for my annual State of the City's Ambulance Service Report. Based on data received in an FOIA request for the operation of the service in 2020. The salaries and benefits for the four firefighters included in the 280 Ambulance Fund was $114,000 per hire, an increase of approximately $6,000 over 2019. Slightly more than 75% of the department's calls are ambulance related. Figuring 18 additional firefighters at 75%, the total for the 22 ambulance personnel was $1,992,000. This does not take into account, however, the longevity factor for some of the ambulance personnel. <clears throat> Total collections were 1,318,000, or 38.5% of billings, which is up from 37% collected in 2019. The personal, co personal cost of the service was $674,000 over what was actually collected. The average char car charge per call was $969. The average collection was $373, which means that your constituents subsidized $596 of the cost of every call for city and non-city residents. The total cost of operating the service without any administrative costs was $2,275,000. Subtracting expenses from revenues results in a loss of $957,000. <clears> the 280 fund does not include any administrative costs for the operation of the ambulance, which I have long advocated for. Salary and benefits of the ambulance administrator would make the loss for the service in 2020 over $1 million. Amazingly, <clears throat> the department has added the salary and benefits of the ambulance service personnel administrator to the 2021 280 fund. <clears throat> the council authorized an independent study of the fire department in 2018 that resulted in four recommendations. One of the recommendations was, and I quote, that the city should consider adjusting their financials to reflect 18 FTEs adjusted to 75% as a more representative cost allocation for EMS staffing of service, end of quote. That is what I do in figuring the cost to the personnel needed to operate the ambulance service. But for reasons I do not know, the department refuses to accept the recommendation which would make the cost of the service more transparent. And including the cost of all the firefighters needed to operate the ambulance service would also result in greater transparency to the actual cost of dealing with the other duties of the firefighters. 
There were only 42 building fires in 2020, which means an average of eight calls per station for the entire year. Having so few fires is a positive, but it begs the question of how the department should be staffed. Yes, I know that firefighters do more than respond to fire calls, but some of those calls are not emergencies. Do we really need five stations to cover 42 structure fires a year? A year ago, a man died in a house fire a block from my residence. That property is probably about a mile from station one. Shortly after that, there was a death in a house fire at another property about a mile from station one. And you probably remember that a few years ago, a man died in a fire in an apartment building next door to the Mead fire station. Obviously, living next door to a fire station is no guarantee. Whenever it is suggested we close a station, we immediately hear that minutes count. It is interesting to note that approximately half of the city firefighters live outside the city and depend on volunteer fire services to protect their family and property. Evidently, minutes don't matter if you live outside the city. I've been talking about this for many years, but no one can tell me why. Minutes are so critical if you live in the city, but don't seem to matter if you live outside the city. The council needs to balance the risk with what the taxpayers can afford and how much risk is acceptable. Meanwhile, the Firefighters Guaranteed Employment Act continues. Thank you. Thank you, Dulce. Anyone else? No one this evening. All right, we'll jump into Mayor's announcements. All right, good evening, everybody. Thanks for being here tonight. Um, so today, uh, we're gonna hand out a few awards. Um, that's why we have folks in the audience today, if those were wondering. All right, so the Wisconsin Community Media sponsors the Best of the Midwest Media Fest to honor community television programming throughout the nine state Alliance for Community Media Midwest region. This is the ninth year that the fest has been region wide and the 23rd year overall. This year, producers from Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota, Illinois, Kansas entered 194 programs, 29 public education and government media centers from Wisconsin and 13 from the outside of the state have participated. The Fest plays an important role in what the WCM does as an organization. The chief purpose is to recognize the producers working in the field of community media. We know how much the producers work to build the community and make sure that they promote television to a medium that presents things that matter to us locally. Um, okay, so um, we have seven uh, different um, awards to recognize tonight. Um, there are different, there are three levels. So there's the merit, achievement, and excellence um, categories for each award. Basically in Olympics terms, it's bronze, silver, and gold respectively. Um, so I'm pleased to share the seven programs that were produced through Sheboygan's community media station that achieved um, the rankings of merit or achievement of high honors. So I'll call on each recipient and they'll come uh, up to um, accept their award. Um, so first program is the Are You Ready to Vote? And this is the public service announcement category. Their award level is merit and this was um, produced by the Wisconsin or the Sheboygan County League of Women Voters. So here today to accept the award for the League of Women Voters is Kristen Booth. So Kristen, you wanna come on down? Yeah. Congratulations, there you go. Would you like to say a few words? Um, can you all hear me if I keep my mask on? Sorry. Um, the League of Women Voters is a 100-year-old organization that promotes voting. Um, the Sheboygan County chapter was dissolved quite some time ago and we reestablished in 2017, which was a big year for us. We estimated at that time there was about 26,000 adults in the county that were eligible but not, not registered. 
um, today, we're happy to say that it's about 17,000. And we hope you all support us in our mission to close that gap. Thanks. All right, the next one is uh, the, a program um, which was put on by the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. Um, this one was the first Friday forum for the candidate forum. Must have had a great um, uh, person that was in attendance for that one that they got this award. Okay, no laugh. Um, the Deidre Martinez, uh, the Chamber Executive Director, was not able to make it tonight, um, but congratulations to the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce for their award. Um, next is was the March for Unity. This event was uh, under the local events category. They achieved the, the merit um, standing as well. Um, the producer was the Black American Community Outreach. And accepting this award is Pastor Michael Thomas, Chief Chris, uh, Police Chief Chris Domagowski, and City Administrator Todd Wolf. You want to come on up, Mike? Congratulations. Thank you. I'd like to say a few words. Sure. Um, <clears throat> when I came up with the idea for uh, the Walk for Unity, it was at the height of uh, racial, racial tension and civil unrest uh, all across the country. And I felt as a community here in Sheboygan, we should be proactive uh, better than reactive. And so uh, we put this event on um, in a matter of a couple of days, and I felt it was a great success. And uh, obviously we've received some recognition for it. Um, and I feel that if you care about unity within uh, the city of Sheboygan and, and being a positive influence, then you'll come and support our Walk for Unity again this Saturday. Um, we've had a lot more time to plan it out. I think it's gonna be even greater. And uh, we hope to continue to bring people together uh, instead of uh, more division. So thank you very much, everyone. All right, number four, we have the Police Department Media Conference. Um, this category was under Emergency Operations Center Live Response. Again, the merit uh, level. Um, the producer for this is our very own Chief of Police, Chris Domagowski. Chris, come on up. Congratulations. Would you like to say a few words? Yeah, I'd just like to thank Scott and the City Channel for helping us get our message out. Thanks. All right, number five was the City Plan Commission meeting. Um, and this meeting falls under the category of meeting coverage, virtual. Uh, again, the merit um, category as well. Um, the producers for this were the city planning and IT departments and accepting the award today is Eric Bushman. Eric? There you go, congratulations. You wanna say anything? Sure, I'll say something yeah. quick. So uh, once again, I'd like to thank Scott and the city planning department and IT. This was a great example of how we leverage technology to be able to provide a medium that uh, people could participate in the meeting remotely during the height of COVID. Thank you. I just want to sh shout out to Steve Sokolowski too for all his work that he does for the plan commission. All right, next we have the um, the 2020 Great Decisions Series. Um, this falls under the series category and they have the achievement level. Um, the producers of this were the Mead Public Library, Jeannie Gartman, who is not able to attend tonight, but accepting the award on her behalf is the Sheboygan branch of the American Association of University Women. Um, and Dulce Johnson will be accepting this award. Congratulations. The American Association of University Women is very pleased to be able to uh, co-sponsor the Great Decisions series with the library. We are very appreciative of Scott's work at WSCS 
in recording the programs. Uh, for those of you who don't know about Great Decisions, it is a project of the American Foreign Policy Association. They research eight global current topics every year, um, create a book and a CD, which they make available to organizations throughout the country. <clears throat> so we've been doing this at the library now for four or five years, I think. We usually have an audience about 50 people. Uh, last year, because of COVID, we had to do a virtual series, and Scott was very competent at taking care of all of the things necessary for that, hence this <clears throat> award. This year, our series will be the four Wednesday evenings in October at 6.30 in the library. Registration is required because, because the attendance is limited to 25 people and masks will be required. So if you want to come and hear these um, experts from the area on these four topics, please call the library. Thank you. Thank you, Dulce. All right, next we have the Thielman's Athletic Club Youth Scholarship Bowling Tournament falling under the sports category. And this is the achievement as well. Um, and accepting the award is Greg Zablowski. I don't know if I said that right, but come on down, Greg. <laughs> All right, congratulations. Thank you. Would you like to say a few words? Um, just a couple of things. Uh, I've been in the business for many, many years. This is the first kind of an award that I've ever gotten. So it's special to me. And I um, had a lot of fun doing this bowling tournament. If you um, get a chance, watch it on either YouTube or the WSCS website. Um, again, I had a lot of fun doing it, and I hope to do it again next year. So thank you. And obviously this gentleman has been recognized throughout um, some of the remarks. And, and Scott, can thank you so much for all your work that you do, uh, the WSCS team, the IT department, Eric. Um, I, a lot of these awards and recognitions wouldn't have happened without um, the great support and creative uh, ideas that you all put into this and making this happen. So thank you, everybody. Now back to our regular scheduled programming. We'll go into the agenda. Um, 2.1 will be hearing. Alder Person Feldy. I move to close the oh. hearing. Do we have the motion to open? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. 2-21-22 pursuant to notice published in personal notes sent by the city clerk. There is a hearing scheduled for this evening to be to amend the city's future land use map for the Sheboygan Comprehensive Plan to change the land use classification of land on 530-532 South 14th Street, parcel number 59281502500 from class neighborhood preservation to class neighborhood mixed use. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Last call, anyone wishing to be heard? Seeing none, Alder Feldy. Okay, I'll try it again. I move to close the hearing. Second. There's been a motion second. Any further discussion on closing the hearing? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, that hearing is closed. 2.2, .2, hearing number 3-21-22, pursuant to notice published in personal notes sent by the city clerk. There is a hearing scheduled for this evening to amend the city's official zoning map to change the use district classification of the land at 530-532 South 14th Street, parcel number 59281502500 from class neighborhood residential to class neighborhood commercial. Is there anyone wishing to be heard on this tonight? Anyone wishing to be heard? 
Anyone wishing to be heard? Seeing none, Alder Feldy. Thank you, Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Second. There's been a motion second. Any final discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of closing the hearing, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That's approved. The hearing is closed. Thank you. All right, for the consent agenda, 3.1 through 3.6, Alder Feldy. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file all ROs and receive all RCs and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion on the consent agenda? I have one. Alder Flicky Paneski. Um, uh, 3.3, the uh, Granicus, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Granicus um, resolution. Does the subscription automatically renew for three years? It, it said three years. Do we know? Who wants to take that one? Steve. Steve? That one? My understanding as far as it is on a yearly basis this is something that uh, the planning department does quite a bit of work on in terms of the amount of time and effort to go through and physically look at these items um, with that we send that information of finance, finance hands it over to us. It's my understanding that this is a for one year and looked at on a yearly basis as far as having the opportunity to see if it makes sense to continue with the process. So this is for one year at this point in time. Great, thank you. Additional discussion on the consent agenda? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. All right, that's approved. All right, reports of officers, items 4.1 through 4.4 .4 will lay over. Items 4.5 through 4.12 will be referred to a variety of committees. Mayor, I've got a question on 411, please. Alderman Boren. Okay, Jim. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Dulcie for coming in and giving her annual uh, report on the ambulance. I'm kind of I'm kind of wondering why this is going to licensing hearings and public safety committee. Uh, this is uh, as Miss Johnson pointed out that this uh, uh, ambulance service generates over three million dollars in gross revenue a year. I would think that the better committee for this to go to would be the Finance and Personnel Committee. I think they would have some curiosity in the numbers that, that Ms. Johnson uh, presented tonight. And uh, also, you know, as, as their curiosity might be of how we can increase collections, maybe getting a direct report from our billing service. Uh, I, just think, I just think that would be a more appropriate committee for it. If we can't, if we can't do it this year, I mean, if, we, if we're not gonna refer it to Finance and Personnel, now, uh, I certainly would like to see, would not like to have to wait and see a report from Ms. Johnson every year. I think this should be on the agenda of the Finance and Personnel Committee at least every six months. And for that matter, the, our uh, municipal court, which is supposed to gross about 450, or uh, supposed to net about $450,000 a year for the city, I think that appropriately should go to the Finance and Personnel Committee at least semi-annually. And both of these reports should come should compare those numbers to at least the two previous years to show any patterns. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. All right, 5.1, uh, 5 45-21-22 5 um, by older persons Mitchell Flickneski authorizing retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in the matter of the Walmart Real Estate Business Trust versus the city of Sheboygan and authorizing payments of said services. Older persons Feldy. I move to adopt the uh, resolution number 45 Second. 
there needs to be a motion to suspend. Oh, you want me? Sorry, I suspend. I, I, I make a motion to suspend the rules and adopt the resolution. Second. All right. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, there's been a motion to adopt the rule, the resolution, in a second. Any discussion? I have a question for Attorney Adams, please. Go for it, Jim. Thank you, Mayor. Attorney Adams, uh, will our Walmart, uh, uh, will this law firm be grouping this together with a lot of uh, other municipalities again, or are we just going to be the Lone Ranger on this one? No, uh, typically how our attorney uh, works on these is she groups them with a large number of, of cases uh, involving the same plaintiff, but a lot of different cities. And uh, for that reason, we get very good value from attorney Seibel uh, in handling these matters. If I could just, if I could just follow up attorney Adams, wasn't there a recent decision by one of the courts that went in favor of uh, local municipalities as far as using the the dark store uh, as the uh, appropriate assessment uh, manner? There, there has been. That's not the only issue here, but uh, there has been. Thank you. Alder Decker? Uh, I guess I just would like to know, uh, where are we as far as the our, our legislature again? I mean, we've been just been, they have not done anything. Is there something we can do to push our legislature to work on this again? I mean, can we, because, this is ridiculous that every year we have to go through this and pay this money. We're losing money on this every year and they're not doing their part in Madison. And I don't know what we can do about this, but this is wrong. Yeah, yeah, I, check on that one or... I, yeah, I, I would say it's a political question and, and yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those things that uh, we probably need to keep raising uh, with our legislators. Thank you. Any other discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. Oh, this is a roll call vote, so please refer to your board docs. Nine eyes. All right, that's approved. 5.2 through 5.3 will be referred to a variety of committees. Reports of committees, RC number 85, excuse me, 87, 21, 22 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 41, 20, 21, 22 by Elder Persons Mitchell, Felicity Paneski, authorizing a transfer of the 2021 budget related to donations received in support for the Sheboygan Police Department K-9 program. Elder Person Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. There's been a motion second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. That's approved. All right, 7.1 through 7.4 will be referred to a variety of committees as well. We'll go to matters laid over. RO number 5221-22 by the City Plan Commission, to whom was referred General Ordinance number 1121-22 by Older Persons Decker, amending the city's future land use map of the of the Sheboygan Comprehensive Plan to change the land use classification under property located under 530 to 532 South 14th Street, parcel number 5928150-2500 from class neighborhood preservation to class neighborhood mixed use classification. Wishes to report this matter was discussed at the regular city plan commission on July 27th. Um, older person Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to uh, adopt the ordinance. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion on this matter? I have a question, Mayor. This is Alderman Boren. Alderman Boren, go for it. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is for Mr. Sokolowski. 
Uh, Steve, does the uh, is there, are there currently any plans for the uh, property on South 14th, or are we just clearing the way for future development? Thank you, Alderman Barton. Um, Mr. Mua is here this evening, the property owner of uh, 530 and 534 uh, South, 14, or South 14th Street. Basically what we're doing is the property was used as a retail video store for many years. It has a zoning designation of neighborhood commercial or neighborhood residential. So it's considered a legal non-conforming use, legal because it's been used commercially for many years, non-conforming because it doesn't meet the zoning requirements of the neighborhood residential zone, which is a single family and two family zone. So what Mr. Mua has to do every time he wants to lease his commercial property is he has to go to the zoning board of appeals for a new user to come in and use that property commercially. And so it takes a significant amount of time and energy for each individual tenant to come in and do that. A lot of his tenants that have wanted to do that haven't wanted to go through that process. What the rezoning will do is uh, uh, change this building to commercial, which it's been used for. I'm sure Mr. Mua can speak to if he's here. Oh, did he, he take off? Have. Okay, he might have taken off. Um, and, and so basically what it'll do is it'll uh, convert this property to a commercial zoning designation. So if a retail person wants to come in, they can just simply get an occupancy permit. If it was a restaurant or something like that, it would be considered a conditional use, would have to come to plan commission. But this way, Mr. Mua has the ability to try to uh, make use of this property um, and instead of leaving it vacant. So at this point in time, all Alderman Boren, there is nothing specific, but I would imagine once the zoning is changed that we would have something in short order. Thank you very much. Sounds like a very pro-business plan. Thank you. All right, additional comments? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. That's approved. 8.2 RO number 532122 by the City Plan Commission to whom was referred RO number 392122 by the City Clerk in general ordinance number 20 or 122122 by Elder Persons Decker amending the City of Sheboygan official zoning map to the City of Sheboygan zoning ordinance to change the land use classification of property located at 530, 532. South 14th Street, parcel number 5928150-2500 from class neighborhood residential to class neighborhood commercial and wishes to report that this matter was discussed at a regular city plan commission meeting. Alder Person Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adopt the ordinance and file the RO. Second. It's been a motion second. Any, any other discussion? I have a question. Alder Person Flicky Paneski. Thank you. Um, 8.1 and 8.2 look basically the same, and obviously they aren't because we had to vote twice. Can the city attorney illuminate or Mr. Sokolowski illuminate that? Basically, it comes down to we are talking about the same property here. The first uh, document changed the land use classification, and then the second changed the actual zoning classification. Thank that, you. That's why. Steve, right, that's, I concur with that. Uh, but uh, the first one is we have a comprehensive plan that is a future land use planning map. So it's more of a general planning perspective and your zoning ordinance always has to be consistent with your comprehensive plan. And in this case, we had to change the comprehensive plan as well along with the zoning so that they're consistent with one another. So what uh, Attorney Adams said was correct and that's why you have both these documents before you. They are on the same property, but they're amending different documents. Thank you. Any additional comments on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 I'm sorry, it's a roll call vote. Check your board docs. <laughs> Nine eyes. All right, that's approved. Other matters authorized by law, city attorney. 
There's just one, a resolution by all the persons Becker and Perella authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Tweet Garrick Mechanical Incorporated for the construction of improvements to the HVAC system at the wastewater treatment plant and to make related expenditures. And that will be referred to the Public Works Committee. All right, we've exhausted the agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? Alder Feldy? Thank you, Mayor. I move to adjourn. Second. There's been a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? We're adjourned at 535. Thank you, everyone. <coughs>